Are you getting bored of your plain old Steam profile? Thinking about spicing things up? Well, I got the video for you. Today I will show you how to turn that profile to something like this. For anyone interested, all the artwork I made in this video will go ahead and be in my Discord server for free for use. Well first, let's go over what you guys will need. You are going to have to use a browser that will let you use Inspect Element. You will have to be at least level 10 in Steam and be able to use Adobe After Effects and Photoshop. But wait, if you do not have access to any Adobe products, I have already made a video explaining how you can safely get all Adobe products for free, so feel free to go ahead and check that out, it will be linked in the description. Okay, so Sweet. So first things first, let's go ahead and look for a background that we would like to use for a Steam profile. Links for all the websites I use in this video will be down in the description. Once you have found a background of your choice, go ahead and click on crop this background. Once clicked, go to your URL and copy the HTTPS part of the link. Once copied, go ahead and paste it into your browser. You will then be able to download the custom background as a video. Editor here forgot to include this part in the video. Once you have downloaded your animated background, Go ahead and head to this site, Steam Artwork Hub, then go ahead and go to Background Chopper. You will want to make sure it's on the artwork showcase. And then what you want to do next is hit the up arrow to upload the downloaded background. Once you have uploaded the background, go ahead and click export. What this will do is split up the background to the proper sizes and pieces that we need to be able to make our artwork. Next step will be finding a character that you would like to use for your artwork. Feel free to use Google or DeviantArt. I suggest you use keywords like renders or PNGs when looking for your character. So it'll save you the time of cutting out the background of your image. Sweet, once you have found a character that you would like, go ahead and open up After Effects. Now that After Effects is open, I recommend changing your workspace to Effects. So what I am presenting will be the same on your end, so we won't get mixed up. Once changed, go ahead and click on New Composition. It'll prompt you up with some settings. What we will want to do is go ahead and change the width to the 614 pixels, change the height to 800 pixels and make sure the frame rate is set to 30 as well. That'll be all for the settings of this part. Now you will want to go ahead and drag your artwork that you downloaded to your project. Make sure the files are unzipped before dragging. Once your artwork is dragged in, go ahead and drag them downwards to your timeline. Make sure your character is at the very top. We will want to go ahead and click on the eye of your character to hide it. Sweet, so now we only have the background left. We are going to go ahead and set your proportions up for these images. What you will want to do is go ahead and click on your big artwork and go over to align. Once here, you're going to want to click align left and then click align top. Now for your small artwork, you'll want to go ahead and click align right and then align top. And now everything is proportioned properly. Now we want to unhide our character. As you can tell, it's way too big for our project. So what we'll want to do is go ahead and click on the top right corner, then hold shift to make it smaller. Once you get the size to your liking, the next step will be to animate our character. We will be clicking on the little pin icon on the top of your screen. Now what you want to do with the pins is place them on your character as if they are joints. For my character here, it's a bit harder since he's all compiled together, but that's okay. Before we start animating our keyframes, go to our background art and go to the very end of it. Once there, press the letter N on your keyboard. This will make it so it'll only loop the proper parts of our project. Once done with that, you would want to go ahead and press U on the keyboard to open up the keyframes that we made for the pins that we placed. Before we change any movements of our character, we want to make sure we go to the halfway point of our project. The reason we move to the halfway point is so that we can create an animation for us. We will start moving our pins to move our character how we like. Once your character is moved to how you would like, make sure you go to the beginning of your project, copy all your keyframes from the beginning, and then you want to go to the end of your project and paste your keyframes there. This will create that loop for our project that we are looking for. Once you're done with your keyframes, you can go ahead and add some more edits to your character if you would like. I just added a simple glow to make it pop out a bit more. Now what we will want to do is render our project. For this, we will go to the file, export, and add to render queue. Once added, go to your timeline and click on render queue. Once here, you'll want to go ahead and click on H.264 and you'll want to change the format to PNG sequence. You should also change your output to a folder for your completed projects. Once ready, you'll go ahead and click on render. You'll know when your render is done once you hear the ding. Once you're in Photoshop, you'll want to go to the file that you exported your project to. Once there, click on the first image and make sure to click on image sequence box. Now you can click open. Now these last few steps are super easy. First, you'll want to go ahead and head over to the crop tool and drag it all the way to the black bar until you see the pixels saying 505 and click enter. Once cropped, go to file, export, 
and click save for web legacy. Now on this step, you'll need to make sure the file size is under five megabytes. As you can see, mine is 6.5 megabytes. So how you can fix that is either lower your dither or click on diffusion and choose no dither. Once your file is under five megabytes, save it to a folder that is easily acceptable to you. Now we will do the same thing for our right side. We will click Control Z to bring our whole project back. And now we will go to our cropping tool. Once you're here, you'll crop the right side until it says 100 pixels then click enter. You will want to export the project the exact same way. Now we need to go to our browser and look up Steam. Go ahead and click on view profile and scroll down to your artwork. Go ahead and click on upload artwork. Choose not game specific. Now go to the paste spin that will be linked in the description. This will make it so the name won't appear on your profile. Go ahead and copy and paste the invisible text for your artwork name. Once you uploaded your artwork, go ahead and right click anywhere and click inspect element. You will need this command that is down in the description for this part. Go ahead and copy and paste it into your console. And if you're getting any errors, you might have to type allow paste beforehand. Make sure to only copy the command in your browser once you uploaded your image as shown. Once done, repeat the process for your other artwork as well. Once your artwork is uploaded, you can go ahead and go to your Steam profile, click edit profile, go to showcases and add an artwork showcase. If you do not have an artwork showcase, you can get them in the Steam Point Shop. Once you're here, you wanna make sure that your main image for your artwork is gonna be the first one that you upload to your showcase. Then go ahead and click on your second image and import it. Once you uploaded your main image, go ahead and import your second image. And then go ahead and click save. Make sure you change the theme to the background that you choose for your artwork. Thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or need help, join my Discord down below. I'm very accessible. And also a sub and a like would be helpful as well.